short but sweet is a pretty appropriate way to describe 2001's Max Payne. It's also a good way of describing the new sequel. It's a game that really fulfills a lot of the same intentions as the original game, and by and large, it's a very satisfying follow-up to the original Max Payne, which is great news for fans of that game. Uh, Max Payne offered uh, just an incredible and cinematic shooting experience. Uh, it was a little on the short side, but I think history has shown that it's, it, it was just a really top-notch action game. Uh, other games have tried to do what Max Payne did uh, since then, but haven't really succeeded, not until now anyway, with the release of Max Payne 2, the fall of Max Payne. Uh, it's it's uh, once again a moody and, and dark tale uh, styled after kind of uh, pulp detective novels or, or uh, graphic novels. Um, it's got a great storyline that's, that's more complex than what you'd find in just about any other game from any genre, and more importantly, it's got a lot of just really outstanding action sequences. It's, it's very densely packed. Uh, the experience is over uh, in about eight hours, and that's if you kind of stop and smell the roses along the way, so you could kind of breeze through this game if you want to, uh, but uh, fortunately there's some replay value to be found, and, and just uh, the quality of the action uh, is such that this is a game that's not to be missed. Max Payne 2 is being billed as a film noir love story. Indeed, uh, Max Payne, now, now a detective, is, is kind of uh, hot on the trail of, of this potential love interest of his, uh, Mona Sachs. There's plenty of romantic tension between them, and the two characters are established pretty well through the, the frequent use of uh, these graphic novel-style cutscenes in between the levels. And all in all, uh, th this is a story that, uh, that wraps up a lot of what was started in the first game and just contains numerous twists and turns. In fact, uh, early on, you, you might not really know what's going on, especially if by some chance uh, you didn't play the first game. However, one of the real testaments to the storyline is upon replaying the game, a lot of things that maybe weren't clear at first will start to become clearer, and actually this helps give the game more replay value. Uh, after you finish the game once, you do unlock uh, higher difficulty modes as, as well as a few other uh, modes of play uh, to give the game some extra life. Going through the story for a second time uh, gives you some, some more perspective on the characters and, and uh, really the, the story sequences and the action in general uh, is so well done that, that it's certainly worthwhile. The story of Max Payne was memorable, but obviously the most important thing about the game was the action itself and, and Max's uh, unique ability to enter into bullet time, uh, to, to be able to aim and shoot in slow motion and gain this big advantage over his enemies. Bullet time is actually quite a bit different in Max Payne 2 than it was in the original game. It gives the game a different feel now than the first one had, and, and that helps uh, make this sequel feel like it's not just more of the same old thing. It's definitely got a different tone to the action. Uh, basically, now you're less reliant on the shoot-dodge maneuver where Max dives side sideways and, and uh, blows guys apart while he's doing so. Uh, now, uh, the main use of bullet time is just to trigger it uh, when you're about to enter into combat and then you just run uh, right into the thick of things and, and start blowing guys away. And as you, as you kill people in bullet time, uh, the bullet time's potency actually increases and the world slows down even more, whereas Max himself speeds up. And soon enough, he's just this blur uh, of, of damage, and you're able to take on small armies this way. Uh, the, the game is less tactical in a way than, than the original Max Payne. Uh, you, your primary strategy is just to run in and start blazing, and you know that, that maybe isn't a realistic tactic for a guy who's heavily outgunned, but it sure lends itself to some pretty insane and intense gun battles. One of the other differences in the gameplay of Max Payne 2 is that now the game features the, the extensive use of realistic physics. Uh, most of the objects in the game, uh, certainly the bodies of your enemies, will, will respond uh, realistically to uh, force, such as from explosions or such as from double-barreled shotguns. So when you, when you shoot a guy with a shotgun, you'll see his corpse kind of go flopping through the air uh, like, a, like a ragdoll, hence the name ragdoll physics, and, and uh, 
Other things such as boxes and tires and paint cans will also be sent flying during firefights, uh, especially when you're lighting things up with grenades or Molotov cocktails and things like that. Uh, this gives the action a very a kind of dynamic flair to it, so each time you replay one of the bigger shootouts, you're going to see different types of things happen. The Xbox version of Max Payne 2 is basically a straight port of the PC original. However, it does lose a few points in the graphics department in translation. Some of the effects seen in the PC version, at least if you can run it on a high-end PC, have been lost in translation. Uh, for example, some of the effects like fire and explosions are, are a bit more subdued here, and some of the textures are, are repeated more frequently in the Xbox version and generally aren't as sharp or realistic looking. Overall, the game does look great on the Xbox, but it definitely uh, doesn't have the same uh, sheer dramatic impact as the PC counterpart does, and to a certain extent that does uh, make the experience of playing Max Payne 2 on the Xbox slightly less uh, convincing than it can be on the PC. Max Payne 2 controls just fine on the Xbox, and if you've played any other third-person or first-person shooter lately, you'll be able to pick it right up. The only small issue with the controls is that Max turns quite slowly by default. If you click down on the left analog stick, he'll turn faster, but you'll end up having to do this pretty often. There's also an auto-aim feature that's toggled on by default, which makes your targeting reticle automatically snap to any of the enemies nearby. It makes the game uh, actually relatively easy, even more so than the PC version. So, all in all, the, the main knock against Max Payne 2 is the same one that, that was the main knock against the first game. It's short. You'll finish it in a day or two, depending on how much uh, you want uh, when you sit down and play. Uh, but more importantly, the experience of playing the game is, is not uh, replaceable. The storyline is unique. Uh, the, the action is just spectacular. So, uh, as long as you go into it knowing that you're not going to be playing it for, for weeks, uh, you will get absolutely your money's worth out of Max Payne 2. It delivers easily one of the finest shooting experiences so far this year. Yeah.